Hey folks, this is Vent with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Over Dungeon. This is a game that you can typically find on Steam for about 15 bucks, though there is a sale going on, 50% off until December 22nd, 2020. So if you like what you see here, you may want to grab it before the sale expires. So, what is Over Dungeon? Well, it is a roguelike tower defense card game of sorts. It's not like a typical tower defense in the sense that, okay, you've got these tanks going from point A to point B and you need to put towers down. No, nothing like that. It sort of reminds me a little bit of card battlers where you're on one side, the enemy is on the other side, and you're going to be playing cards in order to defeat your opponent. But rather than the cards stay on the board, they turn into actual units, and then they go and start attacking the enemy in real time. Semi-real time, I should say. So, uh, it's also like a roguelike, like Slay the Spire, in the sense that you're given a hand of cards. So, let's say you've got five cards in your hand, you're going to play maybe three of them, and the other two have to be discarded, and then you draw five more. And then, while you're discarding and redrawing, time sort of plays out and your opponent can do things. The, the timing takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, there is a couple of different modes in this game. There's the basic dungeon, which is where you typically progress. There is a quest mode, which is sort of like an endless mode, where you can keep on playing for as long as possible. Um, you actually have a skill tree that you can upgrade as you go. And it, it's kind of like the basic dungeon, except that the quest is just you just keep playing basic dungeons over and over and over again, but they get progressively harder as you go. So I'm on, like, I don't know, floor 17 or something like that, and you earn these skill points along the way to where you can put points into, say, an attack tree or animal tree or building tree and so on. There are three different characters that you can be in this game as well. Uh, there's this vampire Lilith that you start off with, but you can also unlock Valley and Sugar, I think their names are. Um, I have not unlocked the other two. In fact, the eight hours that I've played of this game has been purely using Vampire Lilith. And each of these characters has uh, different decks. Um, so you can sort of customize your experience. You're going to pick a primary deck and a secondary deck. And then you're going to mash the two together. And those are the cards that you have to start off with in your current run. But like a typical roguelike along the way, you'll be earning money and you'll be defeating opponents. And with your money, and by defeating opponents, you'll be able to pick between different cards to add to your deck. So you've got this standard deck that you start with, and then like a deck builder, you're going to be adding to it. So again, think Slay the Spire, that, that kind of thing. So why do I like Over Dungeon? Well, it, again, it's kind of weird. Um, again, it's, it's like a roguelike in the sense that you're building a deck, like Slay the Spire, but it's also got this combat mechanic that happens in real time. But you can also choose to idle it, meaning that you can just have the computer automatically play cards for you, and it, it does so very quickly. So you can just sort of watch your game unfold in front of you, turning it from, say, a roguelike strategy game, a card strategy game, to this roguelike idler. So you can sort of play how you want, um, depending on what your mood is at that point in time. And I do like the different strategies that you can have. Uh, for example, um, there's one strategy where you can sort of focus on buildings, and you can put down these towers that automatically shoot at your opponent or um, at enemies. Um, and then there's buildings for those buildings that are like upgrades, like uh, make your buildings fire faster. So there's a building for that. And there's another building, like a forge, that will double the building that you construct next or something like that. So um, you'll be able to sort of take a, a focused approach on things and build a bunch of buildings and have like a gazillion towers firing at your opponent. Or you can take like an animal approach and just spawn all of these different summons. Like you've got alpacas, which are like your tanks and grizzly bears and little dogs and chickens and different things like that and send them at your enemy. Or you can do a combination of the two things. You can also do straight out spells which damage your opponent, like instant cast things. There's um, there's various effects in the game, like certain cards will say exhausted on it, or um, like over 
overdrawn or something like that, where um, you'll have to give up drawing a certain card on your next draw because the card is so powerful to play, uh, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of cool mechanics and a lot of cool different ways that you can build your deck like a typical roguelike, and that's enjoyable. Um, so... I, again, I've played this for about eight hours, and I think it's worth the purchase. The only downside here is that this seems to be a game that the developer has sort of just given up on updating. Like, there hasn't been an update in the longest time. And your frame rates can drop somewhat, depending on how many units you have. Like, let's say you've got 50 towers down, all shooting fireballs at your opponent you may experience some lag and some slowdowns and some stuttering depending on the speed of your computer or just the game in general. So that, unfortunately, is a thing. And again, with the developers sort of abandoning this, this was released back in 2019. Um, and I don't think it's been really updated at all in 2020. So again, if you buy this game, you're going to go into it knowing that more than likely this game is not going to ever see another update. That being said, um, I do recommend it. Even though I've only played for eight hours, um, I think $15 is a fair price to pay for all of that. I, I bought it on sale, obviously. Um, there's, again, that basic dungeon mode, the quest mode, which is like your endless. There's daily challenges. There's seasonal uh, dungeons, which I don't know if they're going to activate considering that it's not being updated anymore. And then there's this arena mode. So there's different modes to try out, different characters to unlock, different decks to, to put together and try out as well, and different strategies. Um, it may get stale after a while, especially if you just you know, continuously use the same character, use the same strategies. But it's still fun because every new run, again, you're going to be facing elites or visiting shops that offer different cards. Um, there may be a card that you've never seen before pop up, something like um, for, for every 200 gold you have, you get one barrier, which negates all damage done to you or something like that. And you're like, oh, so maybe I should build my, my deck around defense this time around, or maybe I should build my deck around this this time. So even though it, you're using the same character and using the same decks, you'll still have different strategies depending on what cards come at you and what cards you choose. So yes, I still do recommend this despite the fact that it's not being updated, despite the fact that there are occasional slowdowns. Um, I'm still, like I said, I'm eight hours in. I have not completed this uh, quest mode, which is sort of like your endless, it gets harder, the skill points uh, mode. The basic dungeon is where you want to go if you want to unlock new characters and the like, and you have to play it on normal. But there's like very easy, easy, and normal. And uh, it's enjoyable, I will say. I idle it, honestly. I, I, You can drag cards and play them. I just prefer to idle it and let the computer do its thing. I have a, a little window, like 1300 by 700 window, and then I'm watching Netflix or Hulu or something on the side. So it's sort of something to play on the side while you're doing something else. It's rather enjoyable, I think, and I do recommend taking a look at it. Assuming you like deck builders and assuming you like a rogue-like game similar to that of Slay the Spire. But again, you're going to be it's going to be somewhat different. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.